Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Uni Life with Canvas Nottingham. I'm your host, Miles. Throughout the summer semester, we're doing a series of podcast episodes titled Before You Go. Each episode, you'll hear a member of the Canvas team share about a topic we think would provide some food for thought as the year comes to a close and encouragement to carry with you moving forward. This week, I am super excited to have our newest Canvas teammate on the podcast, Emma. Hi, Emma. Hi. How are you doing so far today? I'm doing good, yeah. Emma arrived here a little over a month ago now, or around a month ago, and it's been really fun to see Emma sort of integrate into the um, Canvas team and into British culture. And Emma, just one of my favorite things about Emma is how she gets excited about the architecture of Nottingham. And she's like, ooh, that building, that building, that building. And there's all these little moments throughout the days like that. Yeah, it's been exciting for sure, getting to explore and see all the things. And yes, I love a good English building, not going to lie. Yes. Um, and we're really excited you're on the podcast with us today. So to get us started, though, when you think back to your uni days, uh, what stands out? Um, I think for me, it would definitely be just the friendships that I made, especially within my house. So my roommates, for sure. Uh, so with your housemates, like what exactly stands out uh, about those friendships? I think just the time we got to spend together, even just hanging out at home, not anything planned, just spending time with each other. One of um, one of my favorite memories from uni with my friends was we had a snow day, which I'm from Alabama. So like it snows every couple of years and our tires and our roads are like not equipped from snow so like when it snows like everything shuts down and we all like freak out a little bit too much about it and we had a snow day during um uni and me and my roommates just like bundled up and we had a very tiny hill behind our house and like i mean very tiny it was not impressive in any way but we like got the lid of like a storage box and attempted to go sledding down the hill um and it was yeah, it was not impressive, but it was just really fun. We ended up getting super wet and cold, um, but we just had a really good time together and just played board games the rest of the day and like drank hot chocolate. And it was just a really fun, unexpected, joyful time that we got to share with each other. So I think it was just those unexpected little moments with them were the best for me. Yeah, the, going down a sledge uh, is very, uh, very fun. Uh, for sure. And just to put it in perspective, Alabama, it's the equivalent of in the summer, if England gets to like 35 to 40, it's not equipped for that. And Alabama is not equipped for when snow comes. No, not at all. <laughs> uh, do you have any other funny stories uh, that stick out when you think back to uni? Yeah, another story with me and also my roommates. One night we just were sitting around and we were kind of bored. And so I don't remember who suggested it, but we were like, let's do a scavenger hunt. And it was like around Christmas time. So we went through Pinterest, which I think is an amazing thing. Um, and we just found this random like picture Christmas scavenger hunt. And so there were four of us. So we just split into two teams and we just went all over Auburn, which is the city where I went to Union. And it was just all these silly things. Like some were like kind of tough. Like we might have to find this like Christmassy themed like street name. Um, and then others were like kind of just like silly or random. Like I think we had to go to the grocery store and try to convince someone to like sing jingle bells with us or something. And so it was just, yeah, it was just this funny random night that we got to all share together. Yeah, thanks for sharing, Emma. Uh, and each week right now in our podcast series, we're talking about a little bit of a different topic, giving everybody a little food for thought before we go on our summer break. And Emma is in the middle of a transition right now from America to the UK. Uh, as we talked about, she's been here for about a month. And this week we are talking about that transition and transitions in general. 
a lot of you listening are undergoing life transitions. You might be finishing university and you're looking for a job. Other ones of you might be finishing master's degrees or PhDs. And you're just going through this, like I was in one stage of life and now I'm about to enter a different stage of life. And uh, we thought Emma would be a perfect person to talk about her ongoing transition and what she's learning from that. Um, and this is also true for us as Canvas staff members. We've all undergone transitions. We left uni. We went to, some of us went to graduate schools. Others of us uh, started working at jobs. And then we all ended up transitioning from the American uh, culture to the British culture. And we thought it would be great for Emma to share about her transition and to relate to some of the struggles that we all undergo when we go through these transitions. So how has your transition to England gone, Emma? I think it's gone pretty well. Yeah, there's definitely been moments of just like unexpected things that I've had to learn or adapt to. But overall, it's been really exciting just getting to see all the new stuff and meet people. And yeah, I've really enjoyed it so far, for sure. Do you have a funny story uh, when you sort of mentioned some of the interesting things? Yeah, I definitely had a moment during my like quarantine time. I um so I knew that you had to like turn like switches to turn the outlets, which is something you definitely don't have to do in America. The outlets are just on like all the time. Probably not great, but you know. So, um that was something that I like was expecting, but I just didn't realize the extent of how many switches there are, I guess. So I remember it was one of my first few days and I was trying to cook something on the stovetop or the hob, right? That's mm -hmm. the lingo on the hob. And I like flipped the switch and nothing happened. And I was like, oh no, oh no, it's broken. What am I gonna do? So I tried the oven and that didn't work either. And I was like, oh man, I'm gonna have to like call my Airbnb guy. I don't wanna do that. So I was like, well, before I do that, I'm just gonna start flipping switches cause who knows. And so I searched around the kitchen. I ended up having to like get a stool um, because you can't see this in the podcast, but I'm not an overly tall lady. So I had to get a stool to search around and I finally found two switches behind the microwave and they turned the stove and oven on, or the stove, yeah, on. So that was a learning experience for me, for sure. I underestimated the level of switch game that England has. How long did it take you to turn on the hob? Oh, it probably, an embarrassing amount of time. It was probably like, 10 or 15 minutes of searching, semi-panicking, but I got there. It's it's good now. That's great. This is definitely a struggle a lot of us have had when we uh, moved here to the UK. Uh, a couple of our exchange students who used to live above, in the Navy Club, uh, they it took them a couple of days to figure out how to turn on the shower. And I remember one of them didn't take a shower for a couple of days because she's like, I don't know how to get hot water. Why is the hot water not working? And then there was a switch on the outside and she had a little bit of a struggle, but then she was able to get it all sorted out. Oh my goodness. Thank God I have not encountered that because I definitely would have probably been in the same boat. Those, those switches <laughs> for sure. So, Emma, when did you graduate university? I graduated university, it was December of 2018. So, like two and a half years ago. And since then, do you want to just share a bit of, with everybody listening what you were planning and how did you end up in Nottingham? Yeah, so when I left university, I was planning to go with Global Scope to one of their campuses. Originally, I was on a team with David and a few other people to go to Ireland. Um, and so most of the last like two and a half years have been support raising and just kind of like figuring out those plans. We ended up probably, it was a beginning of 2020, right before a lot of the like COVID and quarantine hit. We realized that just because of visas and other reasons, Ireland was just not a possibility. And we decided to split our team and go to the two canvases in England. And so the last year and a few months have been just preparing and we're getting the remaining support to go to England and also getting to know my new teammates. And so, yeah. 
Uh, yeah. So Canvas is part of a much larger organization and there's 15 locations around the world, um, all the way to like Chile and Uruguay, over to Thailand and Australia, Germany, Spain, the UK. Um, and so, yeah, Emma and David and Alicia and a few people over in Birmingham were planning to start one location in Ireland and then just didn't end up working out. And so instead, they were asked to consider joining us and we were super thrilled to have them. Uh, and David and Emma have just been great over the past few months. And uh, so you mentioned this uh, and you've transitioned from your uni days to now living in England. Why is transition important? Yeah, I think transition is super important because it really provides us the space for growth, for a lot of personal growth. Um, it gives us the opportunity for new experiences and to step outside our comfort zone and maybe try things that we've never done before and to just really, yeah, just to grow as people. Uh, so why is growth important? I think growth is important just because it really helps us to live happier and healthier lives when we are growing in areas like our confidence or our work ethic or our organization it can help us to be better in our jobs and i think when we grow have um, experience emotional growth it can help us to develop healthier relationships down the road so yeah i think just growing and changing as people just better equips us for the next stages in our lives whatever they may be and those challenges that we face and how do we keep on growing I think to keep on growing, we should keep trying to do new things, even if they are, again, outside our comfort zone, or maybe we've tried something and it didn't turn out the way we thought it would, or it was more challenging than we thought, um, to just continue to put ourselves out there and to continue to try new things. Um, I think it's also really important to surround ourselves with people who will encourage us and who will push us to continue to grow. Um, yeah. And what do you find challenging about transitions? I think for me, what I find most challenging is just the unknown, not knowing what's going to come next. And I think I personally want to just know what's coming and how to equip myself and how to do it really well. And that's just not always possible. We don't know all of the things, all the challenges or the unexpected things that are going to come up when we change and when we go through trans just transition. And so there's just unknown is just a big part of that. And so I think for me, learning to accept that is sometimes difficult, but important. So what I'm hearing you say, Emma, is that growing is really important because it helps us become the fullest versions of ourselves and grow into a better person in a lot of ways. However, it is also difficult because change is hard and it's unknown and we can't control it a lot of the times. So how do you navigate this tension in your life? I think, again, an important part of that is having people around you who you can trust, who can encourage you and can, again, just challenge you, but also just be there for you when things are difficult and you kind of want to just talk through those changes and those unknowns. Um, and I think for me personally, my faith is also something that I lean on when I face transitions and changes and unknowns. Yeah, I think that's really cool. That the people can support you and just listen to you and be there regardless of whatever emotional state you are in. But how specifically does your faith uh, come into play during these moments? For me, I think a verse that like has always been really important to me, but especially during challenging or just big transitions or big moments in life is 2 Timothy 1.7, which is for God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Um, and I think that verse just kind of reminds me that God is with me, that I'm not alone, even when I face really difficult moments when they're, when I do have change, I don't have to be afraid of change or the future. So I think, yeah, it just helps me to be bold in those areas. 
Um, so it says to not be afraid or fearful. How do you how do you practically avoid being afraid and fearful in the unknown? So I think fear and being afraid, especially when we're facing a big change or the future, that's a normal reaction. I think we all get afraid, especially when we have these big moments of transition. But I think it's important choosing not to dwell and to stay in that fear, but instead to continue moving forward um, to find for me personally, it helps me when I reflect on maybe past experiences and how things were unknown and scary at one point. But when I took a chance and I did it, it ended up being a really positive experience. Um, And that can be like a big thing or a little thing, even just like going to a event or a thing that you've never done before and trying it and it could be really positive. So I think just not letting that fear hold you back and still trying new things and moving forward is just what's really important. I think that's such a great takeaway. I think that's a great Bible verse you used as a reference point. Um, Something, the number one commandment in the Bible throughout the entire Bible is like, do not be afraid. And I think there's something in our human instinct that gets very afraid. And when we choose to act out of fear, that's when a lot of hurt and damage comes to ourselves and to other people around us. And so I think just acknowledging that fear like you did in in community and with other people is really, really important. Um, So what have you learned about God during this process, this transition to England and through other transitions in your life? Yeah, I think definitely in this transition, I have just seen God's faithfulness and his provision Um, when just a specific thing. This last year I mentioned around the beginning of 2020 was when we found out we were going to England instead of Ireland. And so it was a really exciting time. And then just a matter of weeks later, America went through its first um, quarantine. I just totally forgot the word. Um, But yeah, so COVID hit and just the world changed and that affected how support raising looked, but also just how interacting with people looked. And so that was just really difficult, especially while I was trying to prepare for this big change and this big transition. And so something that God provided for me was this small group and it had these two couples in there and they just really loved me well. They not only became really big financial supporters of me and going to camp and coming to canvas, but they were also just people that I could go to throughout the year and they would encourage me. They would pray for me. They would even just, we would just have fun together, just play games or share a meal and stuff. And so I think that was just a clear example of God's provision in a moment where I was so stressed and fearful and it didn't seem like I was ever going to make it to England and any of this was going to come together. He just put the exact people in my life who I really needed to support me, not only financially, but just emotionally and spiritually. And so that was just one of many reminders, I think, from the last year that God is with me even in these moments, and he just continually will provide for me in every area. That God God will allow and give you enough strength and people and relationships and whatever to make it through situations sort of thing. Yeah, definitely. So how are you able to you mentioned that you were able to look back upon past times. God has done this. um, What we as Christians would call God being faithful uh, in the midst of the unknown. So how do you like when you have those moments of I'm afraid and I don't know what to do because it's, yeah, you just don't know what's going on in life. How are you able to remember to look back at those like past examples of how God's been faithful and things have worked out? Um, I think like in a practical sense, I personally like to like write down like prayer requests or things. Um, And so having like a physical thing that I can go back and look at is always helpful. But I also 
I think I just think about the big moments too. Like for me, when I reflect on um, going to university for the first time, it was that first year was really hard and it was not what I expected college to be at all. And just, it was again, those unknowns and there was a lot of fear and frustration and hurt during that time. But I can look back over even just my second year and my third year and the people that God put in my path and the opportunities that he gave me and how they helped me to become someone who's more confident and who has just been able to grow in not only faith and confidence, but also compassion and patience. And so, yeah, I can see how those experiences just helped equip me better for today and to come to somewhere like Canvas. Oh, I think that's a great takeaway because I think when we're in moments of fear and it feels like the world is crashing in on us, it is very hard for us to have the ability to recall those moments. But then if in those moments, maybe we can reference other people who can remind me of us of those moments, our journals and other things we've written down. And it's like, oh, yeah, even if I don't feel it today, maybe a month ago or a year ago, I, like I can recall those moments and read them. And it sort of refreshes those memories. And I think that's so important because it doesn't negate what's going on currently, but it sort of helps combat it. Yeah, definitely. So what is something you wish you could tell your uni self? I think if I could go back, I would just tell my uni self to be a little more confident, to try more new things, to be brave enough to maybe talk to more people that I didn't know. And just especially in those first few years where I was just I kind of let fear take control. And so I really can look back and say, oh, man, maybe there were more opportunities that I could have grabbed onto. So if I could tell her anything, I would definitely say to just be more confident and to just try new things, because if they don't turn out the way you expect it, that's OK. And even if you're just in uni trying new things or finish uni trying new things, it's like now's the thing before you get your life settled to still be like, is this what I want to make my life about? So I think that's a great takeaway. Um, and so uh, I do think we're going to try something different this week um, because I think it would be great for the Canvas community to get to know Emma a bit better. So in past seasons of the podcast, we had some rapid fire questions. Now I'm going to bring those back this week so the Canvas community can get to know Emma a bit better. I'm just going to pull those questions up. So just give me one second, Emma. Fill in the blank. Community is? Important. Community is important. I think that's a great answer. So Emma, what is your favorite takeaway if you're getting a takeaway meal? Oh, I think I really like Chinese food. Chinese food. Have you mm -hmm. found a specific place yet in Nottingham? I haven't, but I've heard many times from Christine how amazing Nosh is. So it's for sure on my checklist of places to try. That's great. Uh, are you are you into all Asian food or is Chinese just your specific? No, I think I like all Asian food. There's, I haven't been able to try like a huge variety, um, but yeah, I do. I like Asian food in general. Okay, the next question. What are you currently binging? It could be a television show. It could be a podcast. Um, I swear I'm not trying to suck up to you guys, but I am currently binging The Great British Bake Off. That oh, it's so great. <laughs> Important question. Who, who are the best judges or hosts? Oh, my goodness. Okay. Oh, I don't want people to hate me. But I've seen more of the newer seasons on all four than I have of the, like, old um, BBC ones. So I really like the host on – I don't remember their names. But that guy and that girl. I really like them. I think they have a funny little um, back and forth. And, um, I mean – I like Paul and Mary Berry, but I'm also a fan of Prue. So. Fair enough. Uh, my next question for you is, 
what are you grateful for or thankful for in the midst of COVID? I am super thankful, definitely, maybe not now in this moment while I'm here, but over the last year and a half, I'm really thankful for the time it gave me to just spend with family. I feel like in the last two years, I spent more time with my family than I had definitely through the time I was at uni. And so I think that was just a really cool gift to just have a ton of family time. I think we all appreciated our time with each other a lot more too, especially during holidays when we were able to like gather again. So very thankful for that. But yes, I think that's a wonderful thing. Um, and I'm very excited to see my family coming up as well. So we always end with a little bit of a fun question, a would you rather question. Um, and so your would you rather question is, would you rather have a rewind button on life or a pause button for your life? Oh, um, I think a rewind, a rewind button. Some, I think you, you want to do things over. Yeah, I think some things I wouldn't mind doing over, but like also maybe like really, really fun moments, just getting to relive them would be like kind of nice. So, yeah. Okay. I think that's a great answer. Uh, and so thanks everybody for joining us for season three of the podcast. If you want more information about Canvas Nottingham, follow us on Facebook or Instagram at Canvas Nottingham. And as this summer comes to a close, we thank you so much for joining us this past year for the Canvas podcast. And thank you so much, Emma, for joining us. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.